Today, I'm going to run you through the tools that I use for testing web applications. Now, everyone has their own approach or style. Personally, I like to look at what makes an application unique. That's the custom code that's using. And usually I put a lot of time into testing authentication, authorization, and logic issues. TLDR, I like manual testing. Bro, don't use manual testing as an excuse for your lack of ability to automate. If you have a favorite tool to share, then by all means, drop it in the comments below and let us know why. And of course, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Let's dive in. So first up, we have a tool that I think is a little bit underrated. And some of you out there might remember Firebug, but back in 2016, 2017, that was fully integrated into what we now have as DevTools. So if you press Control Shift C, our DevTools pops up and you can see that we can easily inspect the page and see what's on there. But to give you a quick rundown, we have the console here so you can start interacting with your application. So viewing cookies, setting cookies, running functions, etc. We also have the debugger. So if you want to debug client side scripts and then the network tab, which I generally use this to see whether the application is making API calls or loading in resources from suspicious places. And generally it just gives you a nice overview of how the application is behaving. And finally, we have the storage and this is a really important one to check not just for cookies but also even though it's kind of bad practice a lot of applications will store sensitive information in local storage so you might find things like session tokens in here that are easily stolen with cross-site scripting now next up we have burp suite so are you surprised it's on my list nope do we even need to talk about it here not really well, I suppose what we could do instead is take a quick look at the sequencer feature, which is not something I see covered very often, but really helpful if you want to analyze a token and see whether it warrants further investigation. So here I have this post request and it's going to verify this username and password. And you can see we get you successfully logged in and we have the token here. And as I get a new token, I notice that most of it stays the same. So this is a little bit suspicious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, click send to sequencer, come over to sequencer. And all we need to do is configure where the token is in the response. So we just click configure here. We can highlight it and it automatically adds the delimiters before and after the expression. Click OK and then click start live capture. Now, of course, if you're doing this on a live site, it's going to take much, much longer. It's going to capture about 20,000 tokens but it's going to be quite quick because we're doing it locally. So now what I want to do is click analyze now. And if we come to the character level analysis, we can see that actually, as we suspected, most of the token doesn't change. And then we can look at what is the actual entropy and randomness for these last few characters. We might also want to base 64 before decoding. So let's give that a try. And it gives us a much clearer result. So here in this token, only the last three characters are changing, and this definitely warrants further investigation, as we might be able to forge our own tokens or brute force a session token that already exists and hijack another user's session. Before we move on, I just wanted to mention a few extensions as well. So JWT Editor is really helpful, and Pentest Mapper is also quite good. It comes with a checklist as well. So you can find this on the GitHub repository. And if you're disorganized like me, then this can help you stay on track and to make sure that you're using your time effectively. We also have Authorize, which is quite a famous plugin for testing access controls. And then we have some other things like bypass WAF. And I also have copy as Python requests and a easy JSON converter as well. Let's move on to our next tool. Now testing across different user accounts, so users and admins and across different sessions can be a little bit of a headache, but containers lets us keep some separation between these so that we don't have to keep relogging in, use private mode or multiple browsers. You mean you don't have Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Opera, IE, Brave and Vivaldi installed just to manage your sessions? So essentially, once you've installed the container plugin, all you need to do is come down and select a new container. So I'm going to open up BB1, I'll close this and then also open up BB2. And here I'm going to come to my application and I'm going to sign in as two different users. And here you can see we have Jeremy. And in this tab, when we refresh it, we have 
Jeffrey, making it really easy to test across these different accounts and making it really easy to test for things like access controls and session issues. If you want to find out more about the container plugin, you can come to the extension page here and give it a try. All right, so number four, we have FFUF or FFUF or FUF. I'm still not sure how to say it, but it stands for Fuzz Faster You Fool, and it is a great tool for discovering new endpoints and subdomains or for fuzzing parameters. Let's take a look. We just do FFUF and then dash U, HTTP colon colon. I'm going to paste in an IP address and then type the keyword fuzz. So this keyword fuzz is going to be replaced with every item in our word list as the tool runs. And then we're just going to use something like user share word lists, derb, and common.txt. We can also check for other extensions as well. So if we want to check for like .php, .back files, .txt files, etc. So let's run this. And you can see it's returned a bunch of results and the status code and the size and some other useful information as well. So clearly we have a admin endpoint, which is giving us a 302. So this is probably going to the login endpoints. There are some assets which we might want to check out. We have a profile, but again, 302 probably to the login. And then we have things like robots and register as well. Now, if we wanted to do subdomain discovery, we could do something like FFUF dash U and we can use, let's use the HTTP FFUF.me to do this. And then word lists, we want something like user share cyclists. And I think if we go into discovery DNS, we can find a subdomains top 1 million. And let's just go with the biggest one, although we probably won't leave it running the whole time. And then all we need to do is add the host header. So we have dash H and we put in host colon, our fuzz keyword ffuf.me. Click enter. As you can see, we get a ton of results. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a filter. So we're going to filter out the size 1495. So if I just add dash FS for filter size and then 1495, it runs, but we're not getting a ton of false positives back. And as you can see, we've already found a potential subdomain to take a look at. My final tool for today is Param Spider. Now, I don't think I have it set up on my streaming machine yet. So let's come over to GitHub and you can see the repository here. And then if we just go to code, copy this, come back, and then let's make a directory called Param Spider, CD into this. Git clone and paste. And then we'll cd into this. And then we have our requirements.txt we can see there. So I'm going to pip3 install dash dash r requirements.txt. Looks like everything's already satisfied. And then we can just do dot slash paramspider.py. And it gives us some usage instructions. So here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass in dash D for domain, and I'm just going to pick pcmsec.com. And it should, after a few moments, output a list of things that we can do. And here it's output a list of endpoints and parameters ready to be fuzzed. But we can also use this tool to sanity check functionality or behavior, or to simply give us some insight into how large the attack surface might be. Just looking over the results can often be fairly insightful, and that's the reason I like this tool. So that's it for this video. And once again, if you have a favorite tool that you want to share with the community, leave it down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.